In the program today, we of course bring you the latest developments from the fifth BRICS summit as the conference wrap up, uh, rather the summit wraps up. Uh, big deals signed here, of course, the state-owned enterprises not being left out. Earlier on, I spoke to Public Enterprises Minister Malusi Gigaba about a big deal that was signed between the China Development Bank and, of course, South Africa's transport organization, Transnet, as well as the uh, Russian deal signed with the arms manufacturer, Denal. Let's take a look at how he explains how SOEs in South Africa can learn from the BRICS partners. One of the things we, we were encouraging and that we want to see as the hallmark of the South African chairmanship of um, the BRICS is increased cooperation between state-owned enterprises. We want to see increased cooperation and partnerships in investments, particularly in infrastructure, both in South Africa and on the African continent. The, the main purpose is to try and um, unlock, uh, to, to increase the balance sheet of our state-owned companies to invest more in infrastructure development on the African continent. But one of the things that the presidents have been raising on a continuous basis is that we need the state-owned companies to cooperate for investment opportunities in, in, in the BRICS member states mm -hmm. so that we increase intra-BRICS intra trade. So the, the cooperation agreement between the China Development Bank and, and Transnet and the cooperation agreement between um, the, the Dinel and, and the Russians are intended exactly at, at, at ensuring that we, we increase intra-African trade, we cooperate in skills and development, we cooperate in investment in, um, in, in infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, this is not just um, investment uh, in terms of financial uh, 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 terms, but also in terms of skills and development. What do you think South African state-owned enterprises can learn, Minister, from particularly Chinese institutions? We know that the Chinese government, the state, is involved in its economy, plays quite a, a big role. South Africa's approach is a mixed economy with a decided role for the state in the private sector but of course we are often shot down and the fact that we don't have capacity in our state-owned enterprises you know we not only can learn from from them but we also have a few things to teach because um, you know let's take transnet and escom for example and the capital projects they are currently implementing, the skills which they have been developing in the, in the management of capital projects of this nature, those can be shared with uh, fellow BRICS countries. But there is a lot we can learn from countries like Brazil and China, which have got um, some of the some of whose uh, state-owned companies have become global champions, and and are, are, are exporting to foreign markets. There, there is a lot we can learn in in terms of all of that, but there is also a lot that we can teach them and that we can help them to leverage their access into the African market. If you take Dinel. Dinel is, a, is, a, is already a global champion. A lot of its products are being exported. We've got a partnership on, uh, on missiles uh, production with, um, with Brazil. Those capabilities which are available there in our own state-owned companies, some of which we actually take for granted, but they are amazing. If you look at Transnet Engineering, if you look at uh, uh, Rotec and Roshcon at, at ESCOM and, and the capabilities available at Dinel, those capabilities can then be used to enhance these partnerships between the state-owned companies of fellow BRICS member states and South African state-owned companies so that we can broaden our market access, we can increase our, 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 um, the, the markets that we, 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 we reach out to. And, and grow these institutions in order to, to, to achieve this goal of growing intra-BRICS trade. Mm -hmm. Now, the Brazilians particularly have mastered what people term economic diplomacy uh, during, during 
the presidency of Lula da Silva, something like 20, uh, you know, embassies were opened on the African continent. But there is also concern, Minister, from some of our own businesses here in South Africa and on the continent, that the opening up of our borders might just become a lead to a situation where, you know, cheap imports can be dumped here, where what is not necessary in those markets <coughs> can come here. Um, how are we going to increase trade um, and work with state-owned companies, but also make sure that we have a competitive advantage and that we have a competitive edge? That's one of the things that was discussed quite um, openly, uh, both at the business forum as well as uh, among the BRICS heads of state. And you, you've seen this with uh, China, for example, saying South Africa identified 10 products that you want to sell to China so that we change the, the trade balance between our countries. We don't want South Africa to only sell to sell to only sell China raw, raw um, primary commodities. Mm -hmm. We want you to sell us manufactured products. That's going to assist because China is a big market just on its own. It's going to assist to build up the manufacturing sector in our country. And the, the other countries are also of the same view. So this intra BRICS trade that we are talking about, there the, the, the is within that within the business council and other ministerial mechanisms, a, a, a mechanism to monitor that it's not, it doesn't become an unbalanced trade where our duty is as a younger brother who sells a primary commodities. So there, there, there is that conscious move because what we've been saying as the heads of state were saying now concluding the summit is that BRICS must introduce a new paradigm, must introduce a, a paradigm shift in, in, in global trade. We must do things differently so that you, you, you see a greater focus on equitable relations, you see a greater focus on, um, on, on, on balanced trade and, and a greater focus on inclusive growth. Mm -hmm. and, and that's going to be the primary focus of BRICS because as we speak, the, the, the political and economic center of gravity is shifting in the world. The countries of the West better watch out because the things that we seek to do here are different from the things which have been doing, which have characterized global trade for these many years. Final qu question, Minister, to zone in on this uh, shift uh, in the paradigm. You have the ideological tension. You have your Brentwood institutions that talks about market fundamentalism. You have the BRICS countries having, in some ways, a very statist approach. We talk often of public-private partnerships. Um, we talk about an innovative way of looking at our state-owned enterprises. Brazil has done very well in using that model to try and give uh, impetus to what state-owned companies do. You often come in for criticism that our SOEs are sluggish, they poorly manage these very little turnaround strategies in fact many of the state-owned enterprises are undergoing quite a lot of oval under your guidance what is it um, in concluding the summit that you think state-owned enterprises in South Africa can take away from uh, the BRIC countries that can enable them to be run effectively efficiently and also of course profitably and deliver on questions of sustainability one of the things contained in the uh, declaration in the summit declaration is the establishment of an SOE partnership dialogue where we amongst others will share ideas and 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 share information um, and and empower one another on um, uh, uh, shareholder management how to strengthen state-owned companies there, there there is a lot that we are going to draw from that platform, but as, I, as, as you correctly say, our own state-owned companies are, are, are receiving greater attention from their shareholder to, to turn them around so that they are able to play this bigger role in the, in the African economy, in the global economy, and for them to do that, they need to be organized differently. Um, and, and so we, we are open-minded in terms of what we are going to learn from our, our fellow BRICS, BRICS countries. India, Brazil, China have done very well. Russia itself has done very well. And, and so um, we are going to put into the, um, in, into the head every, the best that we have 
and learn from them the best that they have. And I hope that in the process, we will develop that relationship of trust so that we are able to share information uh, willingly and, 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 and be able, therefore, to benefit not only our economies, but the, the economies of developing countries. And, and South Africa's focus is Africa. We, we believe that our participation in BRICS would be meaningless if it benefited only us, but it must benefit the rest of the continent. I know some people argue that we are small in BRICS, some people argue that we don't have much to give. You are brick, but not a brick. Absolutely. But if you consider the fact that um, we, we are in Africa, and, and Africa is rich in natural resources and, and human resources. We are the continent of the future. It, you, you, you will then understand the strategic importance of South Africa's participation in BRICS and the things that we offer BRICS.